at police in Kenya to make sure that structures are being followed in terms of uh, payments and making business, uh, like creating a conducive business environment mm -hmm. in Kenya as far as arts is concerned. So that uh, could make art thrive in Kenya. All right. Yes. What about you, um, Camila, as a stage actor? Just, you know, the same question. There's been a lot of dwindling in that. I mean, it's just been going down in that particular space. The way I mentioned, there's so much on the online space. There's, you know, different platforms and avenues where I can get such content. I mean, you also realize that when you stage a theater play, yes. there's a possibility of, of it being posted online. And for me as an audience, I might think, why do I need to be in that space and sit and watch and I can just get it regardless? So for you as a person, as an actor, what do you feel needs to be done at least to revive the theater culture, you know, the theater space. I think one thing we can't ignore is that we are actually moving into the digital era. Uh -huh. So yes. it's something we cannot ignore and say, okay, we need to stick to what used to be before. I think we need to find a sweet balance of both worlds. Because even with the case right now, trying to put a show online and asking somebody to pay for it, it feels like they're not getting the true essence of theater, the culture that we've built for a very long time. So I feel like it's just finding the balance between the two and setting up the structures like Alan has said to be put in place where we have a balance of both worlds. And just having the people as well accept these changes that are happening and being cognizant of the situation that we're in at the moment. Mm -hmm. So then how would you convince me as an audience, I'm trying to just think of a hypothetical situation where yes, you're moving to the digital space and everything is on that particular platform. And the way you're, both of you are saying is that we, perhaps we need to start embracing you know, that yes. area or that space. But for an audience you know, who's so much like into that particular space, the digital space, how would you convince them? Because then again, in as much as you want to perhaps move there, we cannot shun away the, the, the culture. I mean, it's beautiful to just sit there and watch. It's beautiful to sit in that theater space, in that theater hall and watch that particular play. So how would you convince me as an audience the importance of me sitting there to watch as opposed to just waiting, the con the waiting for the content online? It's true, uh, theater is contagious, so the audience needs to get the feeling firsthand. Mm -hmm. But considering the measures right now and the trends, COVID-19 is an emerging issue. Yeah. So we have to conform to the status mm -hmm. and see how to make it work, mm -hmm. irrespective of the challenges. Okay. So we believe as a company, yeah. yes, we are taking a risk. It's true, it's a big risk, but we'd rather be on the good side of history as the first theater company to stream a theater show, then others can follow suit. Like right now, many theater companies have canceled uh -huh. their shows, but we are not canceling. Uh -huh. But you're not We're going to stream live you are relentless. for our audience. Yeah, we are never giving up. We never say never. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Okay, Camila, does it mean that now perhaps stage actors or just actors as a whole as a whole need to do more in terms of being creative or more to convince audiences the importance of actually sitting there and watching the play? Because the way we are saying, and as much as we, we might want to adapt, that this is where we are moving to, but culture is still culture. Yeah, it's very true. And as actors, we just need to have that initiative ourselves, you know, to maintain the community of actors and to make sure that the people around us, our family, our friends, our colleagues, we're making them aware of what's going on. And that's what Apex is actually trying to do, you know, making people aware and informed of what's happening. So actors, we need to really put in a lot of effort, initiative, and just be resilient with the changes that are happening because it's clear that things are not going to be the same again. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a way to move forward together as a community of actors. All right, before we go deeper into your play, I would love us to address some tidbit like issues here and there, especially as it pertains to mostly stage actors. There's always that uh, concern, or if I can say issue, issue of uh, most actors or most people in the entertainment space would really want to focus more on the fame bit of it. I want to be known, I want to be recognized as opposed to putting the commitment aspect. Again, as a director, meaning you really worked so closely with such actors and actresses, have yes. you had to perhaps grapple with this kind of an issue and how would you deal with that? What's anyone at Kakwa Fame Asana? True. Uh, fame is sweet, but uh, fame without money, Pia, it's a problem. Now, there's an issue of mentorship in our industry. Yeah. Like the guys who came before us, there's no string of mentorship in terms of the business aspect of art. So what uh, we we'll, would, would like to do as a company, and uh, we want to be the change we want to see, so we are trying to shape up characters in terms of uh, art in whole.
to know how to commoditize mm -hmm. their art in a very professional way so that uh, you are not famous without a shilling. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. It mm -hmm. leads to depression. We've seen a lot of cases online. Mm -hmm. And uh, such, uh, such cases, we are highlighting such cases in our play, mm -hmm. which we'll talk yeah, about in, in later. Yeah, in a short while. Yes. When you talk uh, on, when you touch a bit on mentorship and i keep saying here all the time anytime we have a conversation especially about on, i mean on creatives artists musicians you just name it i never miss to ask that that question on mentorship mm -hmm. because again you realize with our generation mentorship is very important and again we're yes. living at a time where we feel like we are a generation of people where, where we feel like i'm very talented i know i mean as long as i'm in this space Clearly, mm -hmm. So when you talk about that mentorship bit, what are you doing to ensure that these art, art, artists are nurtured to grow into the people that they want, they have to be? Now, as a company, as Apex Glean, our philosophy is each one, reach one. So we want to scrap off the mentality of selfishness. Okay. Artists are very selfish. I'm not sorry to say so, because I've been there. You're saying it very confidently? Yeah, we are very selfish. We need to change that. You, you're not supposed to make someone go through the same situation you went through as a thriving artist at that time. Mm. So make life better. That is the essence of life. Mm -hmm. Try and give people platforms that elevate their talents, not the same way you are given platforms, mm -hmm. in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. So that is the main issue. Okay. If we address the aspect of uh, not being selfish, yeah. then mentorship will start from there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Camila, as a stage actor, as an actor or just... I mean, as someone, who's been, as someone who's in that space, has this ever been an issue for you? You know, perhaps I just feel like I've done a couple of plays or I've done a couple of things here and there. I feel like I just want to be known. I feel like I just want to be famous. Like the commitment perspective or commitment bit of it is really not so much of a priority for me as a person. Has that ever been an issue for you? And perhaps if yes, how have you dealt with that? Actually, it's not been an issue. I think it depends with the individual. So okay. for me personally, I think theater for me is just the love and the passion and me being able to do, you know, play these characters and be able to convey this message. So it just depends upon the person. Yes, some people come into it because of the fame and maybe they saw somebody famous maybe in Hollywood and they're like, that's where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So if that's your vision, you know, you can't blame them for their vision. But if my vision is different, my vision is maybe to impact people, my vision is maybe to, in giving I receive, then I will definitely have a different perspective to this. Uh, yes. Oh. All right. So clearly, altogether, just what you're saying is that mentorship is very important, especially very for key. artists. So then yes. again, do you feel like that is one of the things that misses in this industry as a whole, just art as an industry as a whole? And if yes, what can be done? I'll go back to my second point, okay. the, the aspect of involving the government. You know, art <laughs> thrives in a social economy. Mm -hmm. So the moment the government invests in art, many opportunities will arise. Mm -hmm. For a theatre company to, to run, we need an accountant, yeah. we need lawyers, mm -hmm. we need uh, PR yeah. agents. So that means the more the theatre companies, the more the employment mm -hmm. opportunities. And that goes down to a stable art policy All right. for these things to work. Okay, fine. Let's talk about the wizard song, the play, yes. as, the play as, as, the, as the playwright of that particular play. Mm -hmm. What was the concept behind that specific play? COVID-19. Mm -hmm. What about it? I mean, there's a lot about COVID-19. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> What's the, specific the, about it? The wizard song is very symbolic. Okay. The wizard song probably uh, in different interpretations. Many people will tend to think we are talking about wizards. Yeah, and just from the name. Yeah. So, but uh, in this case, wizard is an artist. His uh, craft is like, let's say, a poison in him. Mm -hmm. and he's the lead character in this play. He's highlighting the challenges he went through yeah. during COVID-19 as an artist mm -hmm. in relation to the doctor's plight mm -hmm. and the political space. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is a matter of human versus nature conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are not pointing fingers. We are just challenging the audience. We are inspiring them, and we are out to edutain. Mm -hmm. yes. You are out to edutain. Yeah. So more like educating as well as entertaining, entertaining the masses. In one space. Okay. Camila, what is your role in this play? and how has it shaped or changed you all through? So it's actually very interesting that the role that I got, I could actually relate to it. Um, so I play a nurse and I'm speaking towards the plight of the doctors and the nurses. And the interesting bit is that my mom is a retired nurse. So 
I actually experienced everything she used to go for go to before obviously COVID. You know, the sacrifices that nurses make, even when the doctors strike, some of them still show up to hospitals trying to help their patients, you know, provide services. So for me, this nurse thing kind of speaks, you know, from an inward point of view for me to express myself and to air that voice that, you know, the nurses and the doctors are actually pleading for. Mm -hmm. So it's like the role was more personal and specific to you. Yes, it was. It was actually very, very interesting and coincidental. So yeah, I'm taking it from a very personal note okay. and feeling it uh, from a very different perspective. All right. As you go about getting characters for different play and even specifically this one, what exactly do you go looking out for? You know, just boring from what Camila is saying is that this is yeah. this was more personal for her because she is more relatable to you know the kind of role that you gave her. Is that what you also go for when you go picking you know characters here for different roles? There are two aspects of casting okay. in a play. There is uh, general auditions mm -hmm. in terms of. Uh, just auditioning different characters and seeing if at all they fit within the shoes of the character bible you're trying to script as a writer because you need to put life into the characters on paper mm -hmm. so the first aspect is either online auditions or physical auditions but as a company we chose typecasting okay because of the measures of the covid measures typecasting is whereby you cast a character in relation to their behaviors, mm -hmm. their poise, their delivery, and their image in terms of uh, the context of the script, mm -hmm. irrespective of auditioning, because uh, you write with such people in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Camila, does it mean that, you know, for you guys, have you been taking the COVID, uh, COVID containment measures even before the announcement came on Friday? How have you been running your space, the rehearsal space? Yeah, of course, the announcement on Friday was a very, you know, saddening moment for us as actors and the fact that, you know... It wasn't what was expected. <laughs> it was not. And but it's life. No, but it is life. That's the thing so about it. Mm -hmm. I, like, the community that we've built, even as the Apex community, it's that we always communicate. We are always, like, keeping each other, you know comforted we're there supporting each other so for us you know in as much as that downfall kind of came up we kind of started thinking about so what do we do next what's the next step because we can't sit down and keep sulking the whole day we know it's out of our control it's out of our hands we need to do something about it and so we keep communication you know what's up if it's what's up we do video calls we need to you know talk we need to update each other and also as actors we take the initiative to kind of reach out to each other you know see how is this role going for you i think we should adjust this so it's just pushing through and being resilient through the changes that are happening I love what is coming out from both of you. You know, resilience. It just means that yeah. nothing can shake. Like there it comes, is no it just. Back. <laughs> we will not. We are never. It just shakes, but you still. Never. You, you still stand strong. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's just uh, talk a bit about what goes into the kind of plays that uh, you make. You know, uh, from the explanation you've given on the Wizard Song, at least you get to understand that it's something timely. Is perhaps yeah. what we are going through even as a country right now. Yes. But what really shapes the kind of plays that you make there? impacting the society okay i i write with purpose because mm -hmm. you just my, don't think and write yeah i write with purpose and uh, i try as much as possible to communicate the things i cannot communicate as an individual through writing because mm -hmm. uh, as i told you before art is very relative so each and every situation you come up with in terms of writing and uh, putting up a very interesting plot trust you me Two or three people interrelate which e with each and every situation that is in the plays that we try and do. And like right now, we, we are focusing on emerging issues. Mm -hmm. We are not writing about HIV. Mm -hmm. It's an issue, but uh, right now it's not of urgency. Mm -hmm. So we, we focus on matters that touch humanity directly. Like, for example, we did a play in late 2019 yeah. called China China. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a political satire on uh, bad governance corruption and mm -hmm. uh, neocolonialism. Okay. So these are factors affecting us mm -hmm. as citizens. Mm -hmm. In this play, we are talking about uh, challenges within COVID-19 measures mm -hmm. as artists, mm -hmm. doctors, mm -hmm. general audience, and how the political space is affecting these issues. Okay. Yeah. All and right. Uh, right now, you can uh, see uh, aspects like uh, gender-based violence, yeah, a lot in depression, the right. PTSD, 
So in future, we are going to write about such issues. So it's basically societal issues and yeah. what affects us as a people. Yes. Okay, finally, as we draw the conversation to a close, and I'd want to start with you, Camilla, just as we said earlier, that now we have the containment measure, so it means people cannot go watch the play the way it was scheduled. What are you guys doing? Since also you're talking more about we are not relenting, we are not stopping, yes. regardless, we have to move and continue. What are you guys doing? So I'm very like happy and pleased that, you know, the Apex company has, you know, pushed through the boundaries and the hurdles that have actually come come unto us, and we're actually going to do a live stream of the show. So it's still the same same charges. Uh, we're now doing it on a Sunday, 4th of April, 2 p.m., and it's going to be live. So we're going to, you know, respect the measures that have been provided, and actors will be on stage acting live, and we'll have the cameras on set, and everything will be playing as if you're on the stage, but now you'll just be at the comfort of your home, you know, sipping a cup of tea and enjoying yourself. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Again, and, um, Alan, as Camilla is mentioning that, yes, you'll be doing a live stream, so it means it's still very much on. Yes. What further details can you give us? Uh, the posters are online on our social media platforms. Uh -huh. On Instagram is apex.glint. On Facebook and Twitter, apexglint. Uh -huh. And uh, the stream will share the links to the people who would support. Uh -huh. We are not uh, selfish, but uh, support the artists kindly. <laughs> the tickets are only a thousand shillings. <laughs> and uh, you will get the links to the stream on the, on the D-Day. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Support, support is what you're calling support. for. Support. <laughs> Let us support Kenyan artists. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much, Allah.